Good morning. Welcome to another session of Canvas Live. Canvas Live sessions are presented by Canvas community members or instructor employees to help Canvas users improve and enhance their teaching and learning with Canvas. Today, we are starting a very unique and special session uh, series, our medical school series. And today's topic is preclinical pre years and how course materials and organization occurs within Canvas. Just to frame the discussion um, of what our panelists are gonna share today, uh, as you know, when it comes to course delivery during the preclinical years, medical schools and nursing programs have a ton to juggle um, in terms of the delivery of the content for larger blocks and smaller blocks that run in parallel. Some courses run eight to 10 months, while others may last only a week or two. And furthermore, content comes in, uh, in at the last minute from busy clinical faculty. So our panelists are gonna discuss some of the effective ways to manage and organize content in courses. And this panel discussion and other Canvas admins um, and department staff will share their experiences in course design, content management, and content delivery within Canvas. So today's panelists, we have Amber uh, Clevenger from Ohio State University College of Medicine. Welcome, Amber. Um, and her colleague, Anand Korma. Um, he's also uh, part of implementing the um, Canvas as well at Ohio State University. And then we have Amanda Albright from Dartmouth College, Julie Yum from, um, I'm sorry, Julie Yum from University of California, Irvine. Kathy Woltz from Julie, Joliet Junior College, and Ryan Hennard from University of Michigan. Each of them are going to discuss sort of their environment, uh, the challenges that they face, and how Canvas was able to um, address some of them, uh, some of those challenges, and uh, some of the solutions that they were able to provide. So I will step out of the way immediately, and I will turn it over to our panelists. Um, if you don't mind, uh, the viewers out there, if you do have questions, um, I prefer that, that uh, we hold them at to the end. However, if questions come up that are relevant to what the presenter is saying at the time, uh, we'll see about interjecting them in, uh, in a timely fashion. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Amber. Amber, let's make sure you're, you're on audio. Audio is on. Okay. Yes, I believe so. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. Go ahead. Wonderful. Well, um, thank you for having me. So here at the Ohio State University, um, we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. I'll give you just a little bit of background of our, our program overview. So our medical school curriculum is the Lead Serve Inspire curriculum. It has It's a three-part, four-year program. And early on in the student's experience in the first two years, their preclinical time, we do really try to give them an opportunity to have that clinical experience and exposure. And that comes in a few forms. So we have longitudinal preceptorships where our students um, are working one-on-one -on -one with a local physician to get that clinical exposure. And where I come into play is through some longitudinal project work. And that can involve our projects in the community health education program, which involves our students going out into uh, the community, partnering with local agencies and, and learning about not only the health of the population they serve, but how an individual's health may impacted, be impacted by the health of the community in which they reside. And we also have a four year long project um, called Health Systems Informatics and Quality, another one of my projects. And in that work, we also have the students working both in the clinical side of um, the hospital and, and the medical center, and then also on the educational side. So we, we try to balance out where we're providing their curricular material for both of those projects within our own learning management system and then Canvas has become invaluable to us. And each of our, our student classes, we have a cohort of approximately 200 students. And um, just to kind of give you a, a better idea of what these longitudinal projects look like, I'm really proud to always show photos of our students when they're hard at work. So um, here is our community health education project. This is completed within the first two years of the curriculum. And what you see here are um, some members of our Bhutanese Nepali community here in Columbus. And it was a, a farming and herb planting program that our medical students worked on with the uh, community at Community Refugee Immigration Services. There's another image of one of our medical students offering mentorship in addition to health education for some of our middle schoolers. And then we also have a really great intergenerational program here. So it just kind of gives you a little flavor of what's going on with community health education. And 
it also shows why it's important that we have this one-stop location for curricular information when our students are also going off-site as much as they are for this project. And then on the next slide, you'll see just a highlight of the Health Systems Informatics and Quality Project. And because it is a four-year-long experience, I found that Canvas really is the best platform to leverage when I'm delivering information regarding the project work, upcoming assignments, and just that overall view of the student work and what to expect. And you can see the students have been doing some really great work with HSIQ as well, implementing projects that you know are very needed, very necessary, and oftentimes you know, they are able to really make an impact and measure some change over time with their intervention. And then when it comes to our needs and challenges, really our, our main need has been streamlining our materials. We want them to be clear. We want them to be organized. Our internal learning management system is more of a calendar format, which works very well in the, the preclinical years, in the first two years especially. But when you have a longitudinal project, such as myself, or a couple projects the students are working on, I found it's best to provide them the bigger picture view of what to anticipate, what's coming. And so, you know, not only do they want to see that bigger picture of their expectations over the course of 12 months to four years, depending upon the project, they also are partnered in groups and teams, and they need to be able to submit that work in an online platform, an application where not only they can see the grading and their feedback from their faculty, but I also need faculty to be able to access those student assignments, provide timely feedback and grading. And that's where we've really leveraged Canvas. And Vitals is our in-house learning management system, as I mentioned below in our challenges. Um, they just have not been able to work out programming time yet to provide us an online submission platform. And that's why we started leveraging Canvas. And the, this is just an example of some of our solutions. So the first example here, you can see where we have links to the primary course content. And for HSIQ, which is that process improvement, that health systems informatics and quality project, we really like to feel like we're cohesive. And so, you know, we want some continuity from one part to the next since it is a four year long experience. And here you can see I'm able to provide a two part syllabus for our students right on their home page of the course. They can also see their upcoming activities and assessments, their class schedule. It's just a really nice landing page for them when normally in our own learning management system they see a calendar of activities. I can still post this information, but it's in different locations within the calendar application, whereas here it's one location, they open what it is that they need. And then on the following slide, you'll see as well how we can really streamline the presentation of assignments for the students. And you know, you can see that the date ranges from May all the way until February of the following year. So they really do need to see what it is that they have coming up. And as it's group assignment work, this way they can plan out amongst themselves within their group, which group and team members may be tackling group assignment two, who would then assist with group assignment three. And so they can really look at everything a snapshot in the very beginning of the project and plan out accordingly. And then I also like to highlight here on this slide that within group assignment two, once they open it up in our platform, they're getting the rubric down below. They've got all of their specific instructions from faculty. I really like that Canvas allows me to upload the course files and insert them. You know, I, I think it's really um, approachable from the learner perspective when you can go, okay, so this attached worksheet, I'm just going to click on it and pull up the worksheet that I need to complete for my assignment. And I even offer the rubric in Word, but I found that the students are quite capable of just viewing the rubric below. And this also works out really well for faculty because they understand the expectation of the assignment. And then on the following slide, this is an, another project, the Community Health Education Project that I mentioned previously. And this is that 12 month long experience where the students can really see what they can expect and, and anticipate for their entire project. And that's really crucial when they're working to plan their time accordingly with a community partner who's a very busy agency. They obviously have an agency they're running. And so it's, it's best if our students can plan out their time when they intend to develop their programming, when they plan to implement it. And then this provides wonderful guidance. And then you'll see in the next slide, the thing that our students have really grown to appreciate about Canvas is that, you know, as nervous medical students often are, and they want to make sure they've submitted their assignment by the deadline, that they're, they're completing their tasks accordingly, that submission is key. Just knowing that they, they are assured they've submitted their work, and then the feedback portion there with the comments has been just wonderful. I have core faculty who are you know, fewer in numbers, it seems, as the years go on. And so grading can, can seem like quite a Herculean task at times when it's one faculty member grading 
you know, upwards of 40 groups of work, and they're able to provide really meaningful, timely feedback utilizing the speed grader function in this platform. And, and just basically in summary, all I can say is it's, it's something we're trying to leverage both um, Canvas and our vital system. I know Anand is, was happy to assist me with this presentation, but needs to be in a meeting where um, he's going to be discussing, can we link up our two systems, our learning management system and house with Canvas to report grading more efficiently even, so we continue to utilize it further. Thank you so much. Um, Amanda, why don't we uh, move over to you? All right. Um, so I want to um, thank everyone for uh, attending today and thank you for the invitation to present. Um, I also want to um, agree wholeheartedly with a number of things that, that Amber um, said, uh, particularly regarding uh, the ability to use those rubrics and present them to the students. And the, our faculty love SpeedGrader. Um, in our previous learning management system, we could never get them to do anything uh, in the system. And so SpeedGrader has uh, definitely uh, saved our life there um, and made things much easier. Um, so in terms of our program, um, we're, we're the fourth oldest medical school in the US. We are very small. Um, our cohorts are only between 89 and 94. I think this year we, strangely enough, had a, a 98 um, cohort. Um, we're in a very small rural area, which means it uh, can be a little difficult to place our students when it comes to the clinical um, years. So that's why we try uh, to keep our, our numbers down. Um, of the four-year uh, program where our first two years are the preclinical exposure, um, where we also have the longitudinal um, preceptor experience. And um, our last two years are the clerkships and the sub -eyes. Next. So um, our previous LMS um, faculty had various creative designs. And the evaluations that we received from students often indicated that the students were just very confused. They often had difficulty finding content. Uh, they would miss assignments that were due because they did not exactly know where to find them um, in the course that, that they were looking for them in. And so um, four years ago when we, um, as a college, so Geisel School of Medicine is a part of Dartmouth College, uh, the college decided to go with Canvas. Um, we went along for the ride. And uh, we decided that we would try to develop a consistent look and feel for all of our courses, though the look and feel varies a little bit between the first two years and the second two years. The goal was easy navigation for the students as much as possible up front um, on the home page and making sure that the students were really aware of what the course and session objectives were so that they could make sense of, of the content uh, when they got to the session. We are an iPad implementation school. Uh, we've been using them for, I think, about four years now. And um, we also wanted to make sure that it functioned on mobile, which Canvas does very well, uh, both from the um, app point of view and even through the browser. Um, our, we work with our course and program directors um, to figure out what the designs would look like, and we meet to talk about changes that they ne may need to make based on student evaluations. And this year, um, we uh, now have a uh, Office of Medical Education with dedicated staff to help the clinicians um, put the materials into Canvas and get everything organized. So it kind of takes one thing off of the faculty's plate, as was mentioned earlier. They, they tend to come in a little rushed and things can come in a little late and you know we all understand that. So now there's someone who can help with that. Our biggest challenge um, has to do with integrating our uh, student information system, which is OASIS with Canvas. Right now, everything is done manually in two separate systems and we would love to have a way um, to integrate those so they would speak to each other. All right, so our homepage design, this is what we settled on for our homepage design. Um, we keep the course menu very clean. Um, don't put a lot there at all. Um, everything you see in the middle is basically a, a tabbed design. Um, it's one really long page, so um, it works well for screen readers as well. Um, 
We, our students like things that are visual, so we decided to use a small icon uh, representing whether a class was required or recorded or not. Um, and in the table you see there, it gives, essentially gives them their calendar, um, where they need to be, um, what date they need to be, and then each of the links in the topic area um, is a link to their page. Um, in the far right hand side, we have our assignments and topics, and uh, those that basically tells the students what's going to be uh, required of them in preparation for class or, or after class. Um, each of the tabs at the top has additional information, but I figured this is really uh, kind of what I wanted to focus on or highlight for our homepage. Our students really like the to do and the upcoming on the far uh, right hand side as well uh, that Canvas provides. Um, and as well on, on their own course dashboards. So uh, we have two internal session page designs. Um, this is our kind of active learning design for when uh, the faculty have decided to flip the classroom or integrate uh, team-based learning um, or other modes um, in the classroom. And so we try to provide as much of the information to the students here as possible. Um, including links back to the readiness assignments that they were supposed to um, complete all of their materials as well. Um, in the call out on this page, what you can see is even though you didn't see modules active and available on uh, the home page, um, we do actually utilize modules to organize our pages so that when the students are studying, they can actually go previous and next back within um, the course uh, to find all the information that they need. So um, we've had students really enjoy this and actually they will point it out on evaluations when something did not uh, make it into a module. And then our didactic session page. This is just a really simple page where we bring in um, our objectives and, and materials. Um, again, you can see the previous and next buttons at the bottom. So everything's organized. Um, and provides that secondary uh, means of navigation. So I think that's pretty much it for my session. Yep. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, Julie, you're up next. Good morning. Or, well, I guess it's, I've just only had one cup of coffee, so it's still morning for me over here on the West Coast. Um, so my name is Julia. I'm with the UC Irvine School of Medicine. And I wanted to, um, I'm excited, thank you again for organizing this session to, to, uh, to share about our experience and to learn from all of you. Um, so UC Irvine um, main campus has about 30,000 students on it. And we were in a unique situation where our School of Medicine migrated to Canvas um, prior to the main campus making this decision. So because we're a smaller student base, it was easier for us to, you know, sort of make that decision and mobilize and get it going. Um, and that has been a really nice blessing for us, actually, um, because we've been able to maintain a separate instance of Canvas and um, we weren't locked down to the, um, the limitations that we had with our previous homegrown system um, that locked us into a quarter uh, structure. And as you all know, medical school courses don't fit neatly into quarters. Um, so we launched in uh, 2014 with a few pilot courses. And then um, the following year, we had all of our uh, core courses between the first through the fourth year's launch in Canvas. Um, just for reference, we, we also have a smaller class. We have 104 students that start each class. And we've been an iPad program since 2010. So uh, the mobile access was also very important um, for us, as it was for Amanda. Um, the and and as Amanda uh, done at Dartmouth, we also were able to um, coordinate the the um, or centralize the coordination of our courses uh, in Canvas in uh, the, our Office of Medical Education, and that was really huge in what we were able to do 
um, with the way the courses were structured. So previously, we, when we relied on course coordination outside of the outside of um, outside of our office, um, we were really, you know, it, we just needed to make it a really low barrier of entry because we couldn't really rely on um, different departments being able to structure courses uh, in a in a more standardized or usable way. Um, so this session is about preclinical courses, and um, I. You know, I think for most of you at, at um, medical schools will will realize that you know preclinical courses are a little more traditional than our our clerkships or our clinical courses, um, and it enables us to take better advantage of of traditional LMS features like quizzes, assignments, discussion boards, groups, um, speed grader. Um, and that has been that has been uh, really helpful for us here because our 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 previous um, LMS situation did not allow us to do that. Um, we, I, I feel like medical school courses are often different in that um, we have more faculty that teach, so um, we don't have the single instructor that teaches for an entire quarter. We have a team of faculty, and so managing how we uh, work with um, faculty and user roles is different. So in our case, again, because we have our own instance, we um, set up our own roles. So instead of using the traditional teacher and TA roles, because uh, we did we did do that the first year and we had one of our department chairs who felt like he got demoted because he was assigned as a TA in the course. So um, we quickly set up roles. So now we have a course director role, course coordinator role, and a faculty role. And that's really um, helped us able to uh, actually control, in some cases, what we want um, uh, folks to access or not access. Um, and then as Amber mentioned, there's also, you know, the this move towards earlier clinical experiences. So we also have a longitudinal uh, clinical experience in our first and second years. And that's been challenging for us because um, most our, our students are paired with preceptors out in the community. Um, it's a changing number of them. It's really uh, almost impossible for us to get them all in and train them on Canvas. So even if we could get them accounts because we do have our own instance and, and um, we have admin control over that um, it's really not practical in that sense and that's something we'd really like to work more towards because a lot of the like the course evaluations and stuff like that 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 we already have set up in other places of canvas we're not able to use in that longitudinal course so in our um, initial launch of canvas in in 2015-16 um, we were in a situation where we had um, already spent a year onboarding into our ilios curricular management system um, and again uh, curriculum management is very important to medical schools because we want to be able to share our curricular maps with the double amc through the curriculum inventory report annually um, and that is a system that allows uh, us to do it because it speaks to the right standards to enable the uploads. Um, so what we really wanted to focus on was minimizing the duplication of effort between our curriculum management system and our move to Canvas because we did not want to upset our faculty um, by, uh, by putting them through the experience of using another system. Uh, any more than we needed to. So, um, so our goal was to minimize the duplication of effort. And what we had done was we had already uh, spent time putting all of our learning materials into uh, Ilios. Um, and so our use in 15-16 was just a minimum barrier of entry. All they had to do was put up a syllabus and um, agree to poke in there once in a while. We had our students enrolled. Um, if they wanted to take advantage of any of the features like an announcement or the grade book, they could. If they didn't want to, they didn't have to. Um, and so what we chose to do was uh, put the onus on us and develop an integration tool that allowed us to push content between Ilios into Canvas. And so uh, the main question that everybody will ask is um, uh, where where do I need to go? Where are my calendars? So um, in the year prior to our Canvas launch, Ilios was the place that all students and faculty went to see what was on the calendars for this for the students. So you know, where am I? Where do I need to go this morning? What materials do I need to have? Um, when am I going to teach? Um, and so the integration tool that was built um, 
did this. So we so we were able to use Ilios, which now has an API, to push using the Canvas API into uh, Canvas course calendars. And so again, a minimum barrier entry, we had all the courses set up in Canvas, and the students now went there, and if there were no other materials in there, they just went to the course calendars and were able to get their content. And if they clicked on one of the course events, it pushed information that we had already stored in Canvas. So it got the, you know, the, the, the traditional event information, like the location of the session, and you know if if they needed special attire like a white coat, um, it also pushed session objectives, and then uh, most importantly for the students, it pushed session learning materials as links to uh, files um, or resources that were hosted uh, in Ilios. Um, so we didn't have any course content that that um, was designed to live in Canvas during this this first year. So um, in the in the past year, in the sixteen seventeen year, um, we had a huge change where our curriculum moved from a uh, uh, to a well, we sort of had a systems organized course content structure and we moved more formally to this structure um, by actually developing uh, block courses around different systems. And so this is an example of the cardiovascular and hematologic block. And if you'll notice, um, the content is organized by date. So a student will go in and see, okay, on August 30th, I'm going to have a clinical foundations intro to the library session. I'm also going to have a physiology blood session on hematopoiesis, and then I'm going to have another one on transfusion and bone marrow. Um, and so what we have done is, because we still actually have, um, from the registrar's perspective, a, a discipline-based course structure, our block course structures now uh, a comprise a series of links out to the respective courses. So the the systems organized block is the organizing structure and the actual content will live out in the discipline based courses and the primary reason for this was because we couldn't find any way uh, around having grade books that matched for a discipline based course um, because a single canvas course can't have multiple grade books um, so to, you know to kind of put more context to this we have six uh, I, I teach blocks or our systems organized blocks and then we have eight discipline based courses so if I'm looking again at the cardiovascular and hematologic block you'll see that it actually contains content from four other courses so we'll so on a given day we may be linking out to any of these four courses that you know maintaining the discipline based course structure was important was that if there was a quiz or an assignment that was for a particular discipline based course like histology um, we needed that to live in the discipline based course where the grade book was going to um, be visible so this is this structure that we have uh, now um, we got a lot of feedback from students at the beginning of, of the year that it was very confusing and they they didn't know because they see all 14 courses that they're registered for and they they weren't sure where to go and get you know you know complete this quiz and find this powerpoint um, but after the first month um, those questions started dying down and I think they got into this routine we just had a focus group at the end of the year they get into a routine where they know okay I go to the block that I'm currently in and then I can find all the materials that I need it'll direct me to the different places that I need to go um, so that is the structure that we have currently and um, we were are, we're gonna spend the summer to um, to roll over our courses and maintain that structure for the most part um, with very little changes. Um, and then finally, one of the things that, again, we were able to do, which was very, um, which was very nice because we have our own instance, is that we could we could kind of customize our own homepage and different um, 
uh, places for students to go to in Canvas. So, so we can have our student handbook and all the school medicine program objectives, which we know is so important for them to know. Um, we have them as buttons right up at the top, and these buttons act link to courses that contain this material that we want them to see. Um, then we also have the full MS1 calendar and the MS2 calendar open to, so these are just open courses for anyone, any authenticated users in our Canvas instance to come in and see the calendar uh, for the year so that, you know, if you needed to schedule, say, an afternoon elective, uh, a lunchtime elective session and you wanted to know if there was an exam coming up or not, you could go to these calendars and get the information that you needed. Crime Computer Resources and Medical Education is a group on the West Coast, uh, the the AAMC's Western Group on Educational Affairs, and we're really interested in a conversation about bringing medical schools together to talk about um, the different um, the different uh, the challenges that we faced. Um, when we're trying to integrate our, 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 you know, LMSs with our curriculum management systems, with our evaluation systems, um, and just trying to see if we can get a conversation about standardization and interoperability between systems. Um, and those of you who are using Canvas, um, you know, there's a lot of us, and it would be great to have you all join in this conversation. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Um, um, I think there is a question from, from the chat from room, the chat room. Um, uh -huh. for you. And it's uh, it basically says, for this year, do you still use Ilios for this uh, CIR up upload? Yes, we do. So we, I, I don't see that part of it going away at all because we really can't get that information out of Canvas right now. And we've spent a lot of time. Um, uh, we've invested a lot of time in um, mapping our curriculum in, in Ilios, you know, tagging with mesh terms and um, mapping our objectives. So that will stay. We just now don't have anyone in it. So we don't have faculty in it and we don't have students in Ilios anymore. Any Anything that we're doing to man, uh, map our curriculum is done through the uh, coordinators that we now have here on site. Great, thank Great. you. Thank you. Um, the follow up: um, follow How do you set up, you set up the up calendar in calendar Canvas? Canvas. The calendar gets set up in Ilios, so all the sessions get set up in Ilios with all the information that we need to know about the session. So the session objectives, whether it's required or mandatory, um, a description of the session, and that uh, we have a nightly batch process that takes the the sessions. Um, and or any sessions that have changed and pushes them into a into the corresponding Canvas calendar. So each Ilios course is mapped to a uh, Canvas course, and and nightly um, there's a push that happens so that it shows up in the calendar the way that I um, had shown in the screenshot. So from the Canvas perspective, you have no idea that it came from Ilios. It's just it's just a, a session on the course calendar with a lot of uh, useful information. Great, thank you, Great, thank you. Kathy. We will move um, on to you. Thanks a lot, Julie. You're welcome. Okay. Well, hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, I am so impressed to be in such a prestigious group. Um, I'm the I guess we're the only community college that's represented. So um, I'm very excited. So um, if you could advance to the next slide, that would be great. So we are the oldest community college in the nation. Um, we admit 98 students per semester. So we are a huge program. We um, are a one plus one program, which means we have an LPN component and we have an RN component. We also have typically non-traditional students. So the average age of our students is 30 years and that varies five, six years either way. We've had students as young as 18 and students as old as 65. So this presents a different um, usage for us. Many of our students have English as a second language. Um, we have first generation college students. We have a lot of single parents, a lot of Pell Grant recipient students. Um, so uh, very much a variety of students that bring their own special needs when you're talking about navigating and using a course management system. Next slide, please. 
So um, our goals when we looked at a course management system was that we needed to increase peer-to-peer -peer learning, we needed to promote student-centered learning, we need to increase students' participation and collaboration, but we also needed to look at ease of navigation, universal access to material, and decrease workload but increase learning. Many of the things that have already been discussed, like the use of rubrics and speed grader, the mobile-friendly, um, the use of modules we have all incorporated. We have been using Canvas. This will be our fifth year of using Canvas as our LMS. So um, um, we're pretty good at it. And the majority of instructors in this college all use Canvas. I think we out of we have I think 270 full-time faculty. Out of that, there's like 10 that do not use Canvas in their courses. So again, we use Canvas a lot and are continuing to find new ways to use Canvas. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. So one of the things, like many people have already said, is the universal design of Canvas. All of our courses are pretty much set up the same way. It is very hard for us not to have a course that has a clinical component. So for me to separate out preclinical was a little difficult because every course in the nursing program has a clinical component. So I did use some clinical slides, so um, just so you're aware of that. So, but basically everything is linked to a picture. Um, we use a lot of graphics. One of the things that we are starting to use is to make sure that all our home pages are identical. So we are in the process of creating a template and all the nurse, nursing courses will have the exact same template. Um, that came feedback from students that were very concerned about um, navigation. They were finding that it took time to navigate a new course and learn how to navigate that new course because we all got creative and we all decided that we were going to use all our um, creative talents and have pictures and videos and links and we all had home pages and then we had 86 pages that connected to the home page and we kind Kind of all went a little crazy at first. So um, now we're going with just a general um, template to help our students um, assist that. I would like to add that if you're not 100% sure you want to do that, go and take three courses that have different home pages. You will quickly see why it is so important to have a universal home page. It is so frustrating when you are the student, not necessarily the instructor. Okay, next um, slide, please. So one of the ways that we use Canvas was that we actually um, create documents that the students would use in clinical. <clears throat> so every student can go in and see exactly what the expectations are for every clinical day. So they again, it's just under modules. We found that that was easier to do that. And this is just an example so that our students, when they're walking into a clinical section, we do the same thing in theory. They know exactly what the expectations are, any homework assignment. Um, and again, it's to keep them on task. One of the things I didn't say, and I can add it here, is that um, someone had previously talked about on the um, right hand side of the home page it has a to-do list and then it has upcoming um, what we found is we actually removed the to-do because what we found was that the students were linking into the to-do to get their homework but they weren't read actually going into the module to see all the steps required to get to their homework. So we we're having a lot of problems with students not turning in assignments or turning in um, half done assignments or forget and saying, well, I didn't see it. Well, you didn't see it because we kind of had like a little cheat button, which was the to do. So for us, huge issue. So we removed the to do and all they have they see now is upcoming and they can't really get into the course that way. They always figure out a way, but we try to make it as difficult as possible. So next slide, please. <clears throat> We also use, um, I know we're going to have an upcoming one on groups, but just to show you how we can use some of these things within Canvas to set up groups. So this is a discussion board, and we use a lot of discussion boards in our face-to-face -face courses and also our online courses. And what I'm showing you is a face-to-face -face course. So um, you'll see that we put them into groups and we actually assign them maybe a different topic, and there's a rubric. We include rubrics in everything. There's a course description, uh, a homework description, all that would be under the module. The module then would link them to the discussion board, and the discussion board would actually be where the um, student would put their assignments. And the next one, oops, oh, okay. And then the next one actually, oh, yeah, just it should just click over one. Does it go over one more? 
Okay, so then actually this just shows you how they post their assignments and then students are, um, then they can use it as a, a group discussion page. They can go in and they can see, um, they can see it. And the nice thing about doing it this way is then prior to the next exam, they can go back and review it as well as I had the opportunity to review it, make any changes or grades to it or any comments. And so everybody sees that so that when they're preparing for that exam, they're able to see what the comments were and to add to their, their knowledge base. And the next one, please. Um, and again, this just shows you another example of how students will question something. And we use a lot of discussion boards to keep the students um, interacting not only with faculty, but also with peer to peer. And that shows up in their syllabus. It talks about what's um, a responsible discussion, um, how to use um, the peer to peer as well as faculty contact information. Next. We also, um, this is just an example. This is a game I created an app and we are using a lot of apps in our department now. So we're currently developing the LTI for Canvas, but we started to integrate different apps. So this is an app that's available on Apple. It's an iOS app and I created it for pharmacology. So our students are actually um, able to do this and then it links it to the gradebook and that's the process we're in right now with the LTI is to get it so that we can link it right into the gradebook and then it would mirror where we want to move to a concept-based curriculum so as we're adding those type of things they can actually um, accomplish that grade before they would move on to another assignment and um, we're really looking at that in nursing we have some but this is just one of the big initiatives that we're trying right now and, and that's it. So um, I thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, Ryan. All right, can everybody hear me? You sound great. You sound great. All right. Hi, I'm Ryan Hineard from uh, University of Michigan, Michigan Medicine. Um, uh, I'm in our education informatics and technologies team uh, inside our health, informatic, health information technology services uh, unit. Um, go ahead to the next slide. So uh, just a brief bit about our program. Uh, we have about 170 students per cohort. Um, a lot of our Canvas work has, um, been, has been tied to, uh, tied to our, our, our online online transformation. transformation. I know that a lot of other medical schools are all going through the same process, um, both through the larger WNC effort and also on their own previously. Um, we decided to take the opportunity that, um, that showed up where the uh, curriculum transformation also happened alongside our main campus, deciding to start piloting Canvas. And in uh, late 2014, early 2015, decided to go relatively all in on moving um, from our previous learning management system, which was Sakai based, um, to Canvas. And bring we first brought over our, uh, our third year clerkships and then brought over after that summer um, our preclinical years, um, starting with the first year of the new hybrid curriculum for our scientific trunk. Um, go ahead to the next slide. Um, we had a number of uh, needs and challenges that were that, that were brought up by the way that we previously presented material for uh, medical education. Um, maintaining calendars that were meaningful for students and also not uh, onerous for administrators was one of the big things. Uh, figuring out how to organize when we have materials in both that were supposed to serve both the old curriculum for students who are already um, in, in that cycle, as well as students in the new curriculum. Um, and also, we had a strong culture here in Michigan um, of allowing learners to view content in different ways and different forms, allowing them to look ahead, um, allowing the gunners to go as far ahead as they feel like they can go, um, and finding a way to make that work alongside of uh, what we had been doing was uh, a big challenge. And lastly, reducing duplication of effort from administrators. Um, as many of my colleagues alluded to earlier uh, in the earlier presentations, um, a lot of folks have centralized this content into their medical education departments. Our Office of Medical Student Education has been fantastic at working with this. Um, and they've done a really great job of doing so, and we we're desperately trying to find a way to not burden them uh, further by when we transition to Canvas, making it so that they had to duplicate effort and put things in multiple places. Okay. Now, so like our, our big thing was this organizational challenge. Um, this, is, this diagram is a picture of our new, uh, our, our new preclinical year structure. Uh, we've changed from the traditional two and two to 
um, a trunk and branches model where we have we start for the scientific trunk that's um, sort of like the first the traditional first year and a little bit more um, and then students will do their clinical trunk which translates to clerkships and then um, a, br a, a branches curriculum that's designed to let them do greater exploration later um, as you can see from this if we actually had a different canvas course for each and every single one of these it would get a uh, pretty um, pretty difficult to organize. Um, the, vertical, um, the, the vertical pieces are organ system sequences, so foundations of uh, molecular, molecular medicine, uh, principles of microbiology, immunology. These courses traditionally are between uh, two to six weeks a lot of times. Some of them last different lengths. Um, we had before kept everything in one gigantic uh, Sakai course, which made it very difficult to try to piece things out. With the new curriculum, we also had to take into account that there were new courses uh, that were longitudinal that went through the entire year and in fact went beyond the single year of the preclinical year and into the rest of the curriculum. Um, namely among them, uh, the doctoring course where we teach professionalism um, and doctoring skills to students, as well as a space for um, coaching and coaching, learning and feedback in our M home, which is our longitudinal learning community uh, that our students now participate in. Um, okay, next slide. Um, and we we generally brought it down to three main courses. Um, we combined a bunch. We used a bunch of those sequences since they were all longitudinal as a way to. Uh, since, sorry, since they weren't longitudinal um, and happened in lockstep with all the different students in the cohort, um, and put those together alongside of things like our leadership curriculum, which explores um, some career pathways, um, uh, our chief concern course, which is another relatively new course. Um, things that had relatively low number of events, um, but popped in at various points in the curriculum um, as a way to combine all those things together. Uh, we made doctoring its own space since it had some special, um, we had a, some special relationships between how faculty used Canvas and how our administrators did. And then our M Home course, which actually uh, exists for all students in the, uh, all students in UME at the same time. So a student will be in that course for all four years of their their time in Michigan medicine, um, but doctoring will switch from year to year. Um, okay, go on to the next slide. Um, so this is a, a picture of our front page for one of our courses. Um, the, our, this general course has contained a lot of our, our, our organ system sequences, and as you can see, we definitely did not take the minimalist approach to what shows up on the left bar. Um, this, this started smaller and throughout the year grows um, based off of what, what is needed. Um, our students generally have wanted to be able to know there is a place where they can find information for all those different things. So there's a table there that links to um, each of those, each information for each of those different uh, organ system sequences. Um, those are actually Canvas pages and not separate courses, um, as well as links to some of the year-long courses. Some of those are external, like the doctoring course or um, like, like the doctoring course and others, um, like our initial clinical experience are embedded in this uh, general course that sticks around for um, the entire uh, the entire course of that first year. Um, we've done a lot with um, looking at these things and uh, as I allude to in the slides, uh, trying to figure out how to um, how to manage faculty interactions and grading with uh, the LMS has been one of the things that drives whether or not we separate a course out from this main uh, this main group or not. Um, maintaining the grade book and, main, and Making it so it's easy for faculty to use that built-in to-do list with Canvas um, and use a speed grader are one of the primary ways that we, uh, we, we primary ways that we decide what goes where. Um, it's currently more an art than a science because a lot of it changes based off of the curriculum. Um, we we get a lot of material. Uh, sometimes we get it very uh, very early on. Most of the time it comes in relatively uh, relatively hot, um, and so trying to figure out a way to balance that along with um, supporting a large number of faculty who are going to interact with grading in uh, in Canvas um, causes us to lean towards this model. All right, um, next slide. Um, so we used, uh, in addition to, we, we used modules somewhat, but we also rely pretty heavily on assignment groups. Um, we've taken a lot of time to prefix all of our assignments and all of our um, calendar events to make sure that they can easily be sorted and tracked. Um, our administrators are entering the calendar information on Canvas, and we're using the calendar feed um, ICS option from Canvas to feed out to um, 
to, uh, to other things like uh, Outlook or Google Calendar for students so that there's only one place to maintain a calendar. Um, we also have Oasis and Ilios uh, installations. But we haven't gone as far down the, down the road in terms of uh, being able to push information from those um, proactively to the LMS. Um, one of the ways that we do things that I think is probably more unique is that we utilize the, um, the sections in Canvas as a way to organize our students. And I was unsure about how to talk about this considering that we were trying to focus on content organization. But a large part of how we organize our content is contextual. Having students in, in on the right side, you'll see that um, the average student in one of these courses is enrolled in three sections, one for their small group, one for the greater course, and then one for their learning community house, um, allows us to use the calendaring in Canvas um, to deliver them a more individualized calendar than we would be able to otherwise. Um, students have given us a lot of feedback that this is extremely important to them, um, and we were able to find a way to make that happen by um, doing some things with uh, CSV imports in Canvas, um, and that's translated to a lot of value, I think, uh, when moving to the learning, new learning management system. Um, the other thing that allows us to do is that it allows us to differentiate assignments based off of these, these groups. Um, so, we, so we use um, these Canvas sections to determine um, differentiated assignment dates for different things. So the dates that show up on, on this list of assignments for this Pathways Interdisciplinary Seminar uh, may be different for a student who's scheduled to do their um, Pathways work on Tuesday rather than Thursday. Um, and our Office of Medical Student Education will schedule those things based off of their small groups or their learning community houses, and that allows us to, uh, to mix up groups of students in meaningful ways while still maintaining uh, relative sanity when it comes to uh, managing information in, inside of Canvas. Okay. Um, Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Um, at this time, we will go ahead and uh, take questions from the uh, chat room. And as those questions are coming through, uh, I just want to thank you to all of the panelists that were with us today. Um, your insights are great, and uh, we look forward to putting the slide deck uh, as a resource out to the community and the video uh, as well. Um, there is a question for Ryan um, in the chat. If you use sections, do you use section calendars? Did you find it hard to manage section calendars for many small groups? Uh, we do use section calendars. Um, what we usually end up doing is that we try to we try to keep some sort of limit on the total number of sections that an individual can be in as a way to help manage it. Oftentimes, we're not micromanaging uh, the calendar itself uh, directly, but by using the differentiated assignments or differentiated date tools in the Canvas calendar, um, we're we're putting picking different dates for some of those. Um, it allows us to, it's a little more difficult in the initial setup, but it uh, really helps for um, making some of those recurring events work a little smarter. Um, when we initially designed this, um, some of the features in the calendar weren't, um, features in the calendar we currently enjoy weren't available. So we've had to make some changes um, in that regard. Um, but we found it, that we found it, it's, um, it, it's, it's better than some of the alternatives and being able to um, decide what's there. Uh, we've generally taken a, kind of hybrid approach where we, we don't go extremely granular with the sections, like we won't go to, down to there's an extremely small, small group um, to, do that, to do that thing. Um, we'll, so we'll include like a table inside of the calendar event that includes individual rooms for small groups. But every small group that will have something in that time frame that will show up on their specific calendar. Um, that's a tough question, so hopefully that uh, gives you what you need. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Um, just, I want to be mindful of the presenters and uh, their time for being here. I know that we had a couple of technical difficulties that allowed us to go a little bit over time. So I just want to uh, make sure we get these announcements done. And then if any of the presenters want to stay a little bit longer and answer some of these questions, they are absolutely welcome to. Um, 
please post additional questions and follow-up discussions on the event page itself. Um, I know that we will make sure that the presenters can address them sort of at their at their leisure there as well. And I just wanted to also remind everybody that we do have two more in the medical series, two more webinars in the medical series or panel discussions um, coming up. One is at next week, the same time, same place here, um, uh, the 14th, I believe, on uh, 11 a.m. And another one on June 22nd. Uh, as well. So please take a look at that and see if you can attend there. Um, and we just want to make sure you stay involved in Canvas Live and participate and continue uh, being notified of these, these upcoming events. So without further ado, I just want to turn it over to the panelists one more time and say thank you very much for being here. Um, if you can stay and answer, there's a couple more questions that came in. If you can answer those questions, great. Um, if you have to take off, we totally understand as well. So the two questions came in from Pauline. Uh, several of the presenters mentioned that they had a dedicated course coordinators to manage the standardization of the course. That was question one. And what percent of FTE does it take? Uh, and did you hire for that role in an existing employee's roles to evolve into that? So if anybody wants to take a stab at addressing that, that would be great. Um, I'd be happy to talk about our experience. We um, we were uh, fortunately going under accreditation, and we realized we needed a lot of help. Um, so our our coordinators are they're a, they're a hundred percent FTE dedicated towards helping to coordinate any aspect of the course, which includes Canvas. Um, so it's not that they're fully dedicated to Canvas, but that's a large part of their role. Um, and I didn't um, I think I didn't clarify that you know this past year we moved the uploading of our learning materials from ilios to canvas and so now canvas is where all of our course content organization happens and um they spend a lot of time doing that um you know as as we all know there's times when when powerpoint presentations come in five minutes before the session is about to start. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we moved from our um, nightly batch process, because it wouldn't pick it up and we'd have to put it somewhere. So we thought we'll just go and put it in Canvas. And so our coordinators spend a lot of time uh, managing those aspects of it. Thanks, Julie. Anyone yeah. else would like to address that? Um, we're pretty much in the same situation. Our, our med ed staff are dedicated to um, managing pretty much uh, the two main systems, which would be uh, Oasis and Canvas. Um, um, they do have to, we do currently have that redundancy of work in terms of having to enter content in the two separate areas. And uh, that is still our remaining challenge to try to um, reduce that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, questions that in the that chat? chat? Okay, um, we want to go ahead and wrap it up. I know that there was um, a Google document that was posted on the event page uh, where people were con contact, uh, collecting content information. So uh, we will put a copy of the slide deck. Uh, we will put a copy, a link to the presentation, the webinar. And um, if you want to get in touch with the presenters, feel free to connect there. And then I believe there is a Google Sheet that's been posted. So people who attended the session, if everybody wants to connect, you can do so there as well. Um, thank you for being here and enjoy the rest of your week. And hopefully we'll see you in a future uh, medical series session. <laughs>